And then my elder son, Cosmo. Yes, that's right, Cosmo. Awesome name. No f you, you're a showbiz wanker. <laughs> so we're walking through the Peak District. We pass an electric fence. And then my, uh, my wife very sensibly goes, boys, that's an electric fence. Whatever you do, don't touch it. I like to think she was just talking to the kids. Quite possible she was talking to all three of us. <laughs> And then my elder son, Cosmo. Yes, that's right, Cosmo. Awesome name, no f you, you're a showbiz wanker. Cosmo says. <laughs> Cosmo says, I've already touched it. Now maybe he has. Maybe he's touched it and it just wasn't pulsing at the time. Or maybe he's a liar. <laughs> I think most likely the latter. Because children lie, don't they? Children are terrible liars, but we can't really get angry at them for that because we lie to them far more. <laughs> and we tell bigger lies. Oh, the lies we tell children. Santa Claus, the Tooth Fairy. I'll be proud of you no matter what you do with your life. <laughs> oh, the lies. The <laughs> we fill the children's heads with. So Cosmo says I've already touched it. So then Magnus just starts going off like a firework. Well, he's touched it. I should get to touch it. Yeah, but dude, you don't want to touch it. It'll really hurt. But he's touched it. I don't care what he's done, and neither should you. But he's touched it. I'm going to touch it right now. You are not going to touch it, young man. You're going to be very angry. Stay away from it. I hate you. This isn't fair. You always say things should be fair, but you're not like this. You said him to. You always let him do things just because he's bigger than me. It's not fair. This injustice will not stand. And he just pissed and moaned and whined so much that in the end, I just broke. I just broke. I went, do you know what? Touch it then. <laughs> Go ahead. See if I care. And straight away, my wife steps in. Are you <laughs> mental? <laughs> Darling, what we have right here is a learning opportunity. <laughs> this is what they call one of them teachable moments. That's what this is. I've told him not to touch that fence repeatedly. He still wants to touch it. He needs to learn that I have his best interest at heart. And the best way for him to learn that is we'd stand here and watch him get electrocuted. That's how we can know. <laughs> That's how we can know that he can trust me. Is we'd stand here with a smug smile on my face when he gets knocked on his arse by an electric fence. Because I love him. <laughs> it might kill him. It probably won't. <laughs> not the strongest argument I've ever released into the wild. So it didn't happen. Didn't happen in the end, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, but I'm going to tell you what we did do. And I'll tell you what, because right, I, I understand a lot of you probably think I'm being a bit of a hard arse. I'm being a bit of a, you know, mean, evil, old, Machiavellian, draconian dad. But I'm going to tell you what we did do. And if you, if you nod, I'll take it you agree with my wife. If, however, you laugh at the absurdity of it, I'll take it you agree with me. Because in the end, in order to shut him up, we let him touch another fence that wasn't electric, but we told him that it was. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you! Thank you! Yes. See? That, that was a short-term solution that's going to lead to long-term problems, wouldn't you say? We saved him from being electrocuted for now. That's what happened there. I think I should have stuck to me guns. There should be no confusion over certain things. You know, I remember as a kid being told not to touch certain things, only to then find out later in life, those things, a lot of fun to touch. So that's, you know... That could lead to a very complicated relationship with electric fences.